This clip presents some of the basic rules of calculating with expectations and variance operators for random variables. So we need some notation. Here are two variables, x and y, and we shall assume that both of them are what we call random variables. Now, in this clip, I will of course assume that you know what random variables are, but here are two important features of random variables. So we have two axes here, one for x and one for y, and these functions describe a random random variable. We call them PDFs, probability density functions, and the area underneath these functions will integrate to one. And where the PDF is higher, that indicates that we are more likely to get values for the random variable in that area. Now we need two more uh, variables, or in fact they are not variables, they are constants, A and B they are constants. So these are values which will never change. You could substitute these with numbers which never changes, but uh, we call them A and B. So firstly, expected values of random variables. These are sort of measures, sometimes called measures of central tendency. That's sort of the average value we would expect if we were to repeatedly draw from that random variable. If you were to repeatedly uh, roll a dice, on average, you would expect a value of 3.5. That's the expected value of a dice roll. And both our random variables will have an expected value, e of x and e of y. Then we need to think about variances. Variances are a measure of how dispersed the random variable is, how variable the outcomes are. And again, we will have a variance for x and a variance for y. In fact, variances can be expressed in terms of expectations, and that will be extremely useful. So let's think about the variance of x. That is defined, in fact, as the expectation of x minus the expectation of x, and that squared. And an alternative way of writing this in terms of expectation is this. The variance of x is also the expected value of x squared, minus the expected value of x squared. So both of these uh, alternative ways of thinking about the variances will be extremely useful. And before we continue, we also need to mention the covariance. The covariance is a measure of how the two random variables x and y move together. And this is defined as the expected value of x minus the expected value of x times y minus the expected value of y. Again, there is an alternative specification of the covariance. In fact, that follows immediately from the previous uh, version. The covariance of x and y is also equal to the expected value of x times y minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y, you can basically use a uh, simple algebra to get from the middle expression to the last expression. Finally, we need to think about the correlation. The correlation between x and y is the covariance between x and y divided by the square root of variance of x times variance of y. The advantage of the correlation is that this measure will be between negative 1 and 1, but we will not talk in more detail about the correlation here. Now look at these expressions. Expected value of x, then the variance of x can also be uh, expressed as an expected value of something, and equally the covariance is an expected value of something. This is extremely useful because when it comes to calculating sample estimators for either the expected value, the variance or the covariance, all we have to do is replace the expected value operator with the following algebraic expression. We replace it with 1 over n times the sum, and that sum goes from i equals 1 to n, and then in the parenthesis we just have whatever the expectations operator is on. So let's give us an example. If we calculate 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n times xi, what we get here 
is the sample mean, which is the sample estimator for the expected value of x. So if we look at the expected value of x, we merely replace the expectations operator with this sample average. So let's learn how to calculate with expectations and variances. If you have a random variable x and multiply it with the constant a and you want the expectation of that, all you're going to get is a times the expected value of x. The constant can be drawn out of the expectations operator. What if you have the expected value of, if you want to calculate the expected value of a times x plus b times y? So two random variables x and y each pre-multiplied with a constant. What we then get is a times the expected value of x plus b times the expected value of y. So the expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected values. Next we'll learn a very important calculation rule with variances. If you want to calculate the variance of a constant, so we we'll write that in green again, times a random variable x, so variance of a times x, then that is equal to a squared times the variance of x. So again we can draw the constant out of the variance operator, but we need to square that constant. Next we'll think about uh, the covariance operation, how that works if we want the covariance of a times x and b times y, so the covariance of these two scaled random variables. What we get here is a times b, we get the two uh, constants out, and times the covariance of x and y. So again we can draw the constants out of the covariance operator. Also we need to know what the covariance of x and x is. The covariance of x with itself, that is merely the variance of x. We should also just state formally in some sense, we've used that already, what the expected value of a constant is. Expectations operator really only makes sense for random variables, so the expected value of a constant is a constant. And the variance of a constant? Well, it's zero because the constant doesn't vary. And the covariance between a constant a and a random variable x is also zero. Because whatever the random variable x does, the constant doesn't move. So there's no relationship between these two. So these were some basic rules. Let's copy these rules here and also just uh, note down again two of the expressions we stated before. The first one is that the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus expected value of x squared. and the covariance of x, y is equal to the expected value of uh, x times y minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. So with these rules I now want you to show that in general the variance of the sum of two random variables and I'll just use different names. So I call the random variables m and n. So the variance of m plus n is not equal to the variance of m plus the variance of n. That would be a very nice rule to calculate with, but unfortunately it's not true. So m and n are random variables. So all we need is on the top of the screen. These are all the, the rules we need to establish that inequality. So we start with variance of m plus n and we start out using this expression for the variance. Now, instead of variance of x, we have variance of m plus n. So m plus n takes the role of x. So variance of m plus n is equal to the expected value of m plus n squared minus the expected value of m plus n and then that expected value squared. All we've got to do now is to expand the quadratic term in the first equation. So we get the expected value of m squared plus 2mn plus n squared and then minus and recall what we have here that's the squared of the expected value of m plus n so we have uh, 
um, a, an expectation of m plus n, so an expectation of a sum, and that is using the rule above, they are just the sum of the two expectations. So what we've got to do next is we just uh, copy the first term, we leave that unchanged for that step, but here the second term here is a quadratic term again, so we just factor this out, we get expected value of m squared plus 2 expected value of m times expected value of n plus expected value of n squared. And now we have the expectation of a sum. We again use this rule. The expectation of a sum is the same as the sum of the expectations. So we just write the individual expectations. Here for the second term, expected value of 2 times m times n. 2 is a constant, so we can take that outside the expectations operator. And then we have plus expected value of n squared. And then we have minus a whole lot of terms. Just be careful that you get the uh, signs right here. So minus expected value of m squared, minus 2 times expected value of m times expected value of n, minus expected value of n squared. So what are we going to do next? We're going to collect terms using the same random variable. So let's first collect all the terms that use the random variable m only expected value of m squared minus expected value of m and that's squared. Then the next lot we're gonna collect is all the terms that are only in n. So we have expected value of n squared minus the expected value of n and that expected value squared. So that's the blue lot and lastly uh, we have two remaining terms and they are both in the product of m and n or sort of the second one so let's collect those together and we will factor out the two as we go so two times the expected value of m times n minus the expected value of m times the expected value of n so this green bit we're gonna refer now to our equations for the variance here. So we can see that the yellow bit is really nothing else but the variance of m. And equally the blue terms add up to the variance of n and the green term recall that the covariance can be expressed in terms of expectations in that. So that clearly becomes the covariance of m comma n. So, we found out that the variance of m plus n equals the variance of m plus the variance of n plus 2 times covariance of m and n, and that is indeed unequal to our initial statement, or confirms our initial statement. 